Okay. Yeah, thank you all for uh, joining this session. So good evening, good morning, or good afternoon. So wherever you are from there, you joined. So uh, so today's session, so we will be seeing on the enterprise project portfolio management and the integrated project management solution. So we uh, conducted uh, by Center for Advanced Practical Project Management and uh, uh, Provincial Consulting. So um, you may be wondering why you both are together or not one is presenting. So we both uh, together uh, um, prepared some solution in the integrated project management solution. So we would like to show and we would like to promote that and which whoever would like to take our services. So using that it will be helpful. So before we start fully, so just uh, uh, so I will be presenting for one hour or one hour 10 minutes and then uh, Prashant will be taking for another 30 minutes and we'll be opening for question Q&A uh, um, the last uh, 20 minutes. Uh, so uh, keep yourself muted and any uh, questions you can uh, type it in the chat window and we'll be answering at the end or if any um, uh, uh, major questions that are coming up in between so you can unmute and you can uh, ask. Okay. So this is our uh, agenda so which what we'll be going to follow. Uh, so first we'll be seeing uh, who, who we are as CAPPM and the provinces. Then a small introduction of uh, EPPM and the benefits of EPPM, that is Enterprise Project Portfolio Management. And then we'll be seeing the demo on uh, project professional or uh, the project client. So the name uh, varies based on uh, whether you're using the on-prem or the cloud. And uh, then we'll be seeing on the project. Uh, along with that, we'll be seeing on project online and project for the web. And a little bit on uh, resource management. Then uh, we'll be starting with the APMS, the integrated project management solutions with the various different templates that we have built and other customizations and uh, project DA pages, uh, the views. So what are the different uh, options that are available? So that we'll be seeing and then we'll be seeing on the Power BI reporting the implementation and migration approach with the um, full product package. What do you have? And uh, so if you take up a solution from us, what are the different options you have available? And we'll be having a Q&A session. And if you join fully and uh, submit the PD uh, feedback, uh, that is uh, that will be sent at the end by uh, provinces. So you will be getting two PDUs. Okay. So whichever uh, you see in the gray color will be uh, taken by me and the uh, orange color will be taken by provinces. So let's see who uh, CAPPM is. So we are a uh, um, uh, consulting and training company. So basically into project and portfolio management along with the agile uh, uh, services. So we do so advisory and consulting services on project management, uh, business agility transformation using SAFE and other professional services on um, PMO setup, PMO as a service setup, schedule migration, uh, onboarding of project uh, planning and controlling team, mentoring and coaching in um, uh, project controlling, project management, portfolio management, and uh, various different uh, requirements on the PPM space. And also we do the implementation services on uh, best practices in um, uh, P6, uh, Microsoft Project Online, Project Server, and also we do this, uh, uh, the custom solution which we have prepared. And also we support on the EPPM migration and upgradation services. The trainings what we offer is mainly on the PMI um, certification training, PMI best practices training on EVM, WBS and project estimate and the safe certification workshops. So the various uh, that is related to agile and scaling agile and the PPM in, on the PPM technology space, uh, P6 uh, project online and Azure DevOps. So the P and C is uh, these uh, public and corporate uh, training programs. And uh, about uh, provinces, 
So what ProJuice is? Uh, so ProJuice is a 360 degree uh, project management service provider. So we, they provide uh, the various uh, training, consulting, and various different uh, solutions based on um, uh, the corporate and customer needs. And they have different uh, built-in uh, products in tie up with the different uh, various different organizations and um, their own developed products. The journey of uh, ProVentures it started in 2006 and it got incorporated in 2011 to uh, 11 mid, and uh, they have uh, various training competencies on uh, program management, PMISP, ACP, um, PBA. Uh, as well as PMD Pro. And the key accounts uh, which they are completed uh, in the Novartis, ITC, Bumer, so those organizations. And the various partnerships uh, have is the Microsoft Gold Partner. So they are the Gold Partner for Microsoft. And also um, the PMI authorized uh, training partner. Uh, so the so as you know from uh, January only the training partners can do the PMP training programs, and also the uh, the partnership is with the ProChain, uh, that is mainly used for critical chain project management, TPG. So that is for uh, various other integration of the PPM products and the risk management from Interware, and the project management for NGOs from PM4 NGOs. So these. Uh, are about uh, CAPPM and uh, ProVentures. OK, so we'll go into the topic. So it's on enterprise project portfolio management. So a little bit of the basics, just um, a major highlight of PPM, and then we'll go directly into the demo. I'm not going to spend much time on the PPTs. Um, uh, so uh, enterprise basically what it is is the uh, any enterprise that works towards a common goal what they want to uh, achieve whereas eppm so that works towards the common goal in achieving the project portfolio management process so how they achieve by using the, um, the collective or uh, projects and portfolios and to take better decision making uh, optimize the resources across the organization and uh, the collaboration between various different projects, programs, uh, uh, the business and to improve the productivity. Okay. I think someone is uh, unmuted, so if you would like, if you can mute yourself, I would appreciate. Thank you. And the main uh, APPM solution benefits are uh, so it gives you the standardized and the automate the governance process so you can uh, standardize the governance process and automate it. So at each stage or each phase, each phase what are the different uh, set of requirements that need to be achieved so that will be easily achieved with you. And then uh, you can manage the resources so in a centralized resource pool. You can have the resource pool in a centralized resource system and you'll be able to manage it better. So when and each time uh, when a particular resource is needed and the collaboration of the projects, programs, portfolios, everything can be easily attained. Uh, can measure and track the portfolio performance and the better part is you can quickly realize the return of investment on each and every uh, projects and programs. So the main points to ponder before uh, while using the EPPM system or while going ahead with the PPM EPPM system is uh, you need to keep the process before technology. So we, uh, once the technology is there, it will not run on its own because everything requires a process and the people to run it. Um, so it's changed the way you work. So it doesn't mean that EPPM uh, you do the implementation and the software implementation is uh, complete or the uh, installation of software is done, then uh, everything is successful. No, so because the people has to um, find out what the change is and they have to do a, go ahead with the change. And if the organization is not ready and they are not willing, then don't go ahead with the EPPM system because it's majorly uh, impacts the system and it uh, gives the uh, change and the change in the behavior of uh, each and every individual. 
and consider the gap so where you are now so where you want to go and what are the uh, different timelines that need to achieve and um, so uh, what are the achievements that you need to uh, uh, finish before uh, achieving the final goal and if you see eppm is not a driver and it is an enabler so it's basically the process that it is uh, driving and it enables you to uh, do a better uh, project and project portfolio management and it gives a uh, 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 realistic uh, and you set a realistic uh, expectation of what you need uh, what is output that you need from the eppm system so eppm tool if you see on any eppm tool whether it is uh, now we are going to see project uh, microsoft related project online but if you see any eppm tool uh, whether it is uh, primera or uh, clarity or eppm so anything so it will based on a web based architecture and it is a network based which is uh, uh, and uh, driven from the database so either oracle or microsoft sql database and you'll be having the role based uh, preferences and uh, admin and user preferences uh, it stores all the projects in a single database and how you need to manage so if uh, in the whole organization to make it as a enterprise and it is in a central database enables uh, managers to access project data anywhere at and at any time so as we see so it is a role based information flow so uh, what the executives need so they will be able to get it so they you can um, set up the projects so the project managers so they can see only their set of projects they want to see so if whatever the projects they are involved and the program managers if the program managers will be able to see their set of projects and the team members they will be able to see the set uh, the oh, high level of the project information and which are the tasks that they are going to work and the um, reporting information and the resource managers will be able to manage that set of uh, resources which they want to do and executives will be able to see the high level what information that they need and what are the reporting requirements that they would like to have okay so now we'll go straightly into the demo part uh, okay, so this is the project online system. So with, this is mainly uh, working on cloud. So the from the cloud uh, system, and uh, this is the interface of the project online. So where we have the project center. So this is the project center where you will you have the full set of uh, uh, list of projects, whatever the list of projects that you have. That list of projects will be available here so this is the central database but whether you will be able to see all the full set of projects that is based on the role that you're playing so whether if you do if you are a project manager you will be able to see only if you're managing only these two projects you'll be able to see only these two projects as a, as a program manager if you're managing at this level you'll be able to see only this set of uh, projects and as a portfolio level so you'll be able to see the whole uh, picture in which portfolio you are so that level of portfolio information that you'll be seeing so at different different levels you'll be able to see and so you have different views that are available so based on that you'll be able to uh, find out so what information that you need so you'll be able to find out those information so now we are in the safe metrics view so where you'll be able to see based on metrics that are available for safe Okay. And other things that are available are the uh, resource center. So in the resource center, you will be able to see the centralized uh, resource pool, the set of resources that are available. So here also once again, so this uh, based on uh, the hierarchy and the, arc, uh, the requirements, you can set whether the resource manager can see only their set of requ uh, pro, uh, resources and the team member can see only his and the uh, subordinates if anyone is reporting and then we have the portfolio analysis so that is for the portfolio management so uh, how the prioritization so how you select the drivers and how we prioritize the different drivers and different projects and uh, how we analyze the project and which project to take which project not to take so those informations 
and the task center that shows how you go to uh, so each and every person so for me how which are the different tasks that are being assigned and from which date to which date which are the tasks that i need to work and at the right side and a distribution pattern for that particular week which are the tasks that i need to work so that information also you will be able to see on So now in the source center, if you see here, there is a small icon that it is showing. So if you open that icon, so that automatically opens this project in the Microsoft Project Planner. So that is the project professional or the project client that this uh, project will open. So if you open the Agile implementation, so the Agile implementation project is will show up here so if you see here so the same information uh, what it is there so that it will be showing up here so if i open agile implementation and i go to the schedule so the same schedule we'll be seeing it there and if you change any data here and publish that information so that the same information you'll be able to view here also. OK. So in uh, so I hope uh, so in BMS project we are not going to go in deep, so keeping the time as a constraint. So the major level what we are going to see is uh, the scheduling. So this is where you do the scheduling part. So where you have the set of uh, uh, task. You build a set of tasks based on the summary or the work packages and the different levels you can create. So whether uh, level one or level two and the various different levels and the overall levels that you can create and you can specify the uh, relationship by using the predecessor or the successor. So if in case if we have used 2010 or 2013, 16, so the latest changes that they have done is uh, so instead of just uh, seeing the so here you'll be seeing which is the relationship that it is being linked. So this is being linked to 69. So after 69, the 71st task has to start. So while giving the relationship itself, you can find out from here the set the names of that particular task. So earlier in 2013 or 16 or if you're using 2010 it will show only the numbers you not even numbers you have to type the numbers but here the in the latest version so they have implemented and in the drop down itself you can find out which what type of task with the ids of that particular task okay so you build uh, with the set of uh, task with the wbs and uh, with the summary that is the WB is the summary task that you create and then give the duration for each and every task and give the relationship uh, with the start date that is given. So automatically it will give you the uh, critical path and when you want to start and when you want to finish that particular project. So here you can see so when you can start and when you can finish it. And once you finish that you will be defining the resource sheet so resource sheet you will define and uh, so what are the different resources that i need so uh, that set of resources that i will be um, uh, defining it here so this is the these are the resources that are coming from the resource pool that is from the central database now if i want to add a resource so i'll say go add a resource and uh, build team from enterprise okay so so these are the already available resources the project resources that are there now i need to add an epic owner so i can say select that and here i can say add or uh, i need to add some other resource i need to add uh, training user 3 to this particular uh, project so i can select that and before adding i if you want to see uh, what is their availability then i can go ahead and say from which day to which stage so 26 uh, I need to find out whether they are available or not. Um, OK, so yeah, 416 hours it is available, so that particular resource is available, so I'll say select and then say OK. So if you see at the bottom, you can see that particular resource is being added here. 
Okay, so what's the resources are added, but if some resources is not there and you want to add that particular resource, then you can add it like this so that it will take it as a local resource and not as a centralized resource. So you will not be able to manage centrally, so but you using as a particular thing for that particular project alone. So their their availability, um, their uh, which project, which task they are working. So those type of information that you will not be able to get it. So this uh, the in resource information either it, whether it is a work resource or a material resource or a cost resource that you can specify and define. So since uh, this is a local resource, you will be able to select whether it's a work or a material or a cost. But for the um, enterprise resources so that is being set at the enterprise global resource pool level so once that is being uh, defined then you can assign that resources to each and every task okay so for uh, this particular task what are the resources that are needed this particular task what are the resources that are needed so each and every um, task you assign the resources then you can go ahead and do the analysis so resource analysis you'll be able to do so either by uh, resource graph so how the resources are working okay so business analyst how they are working portfolio analysis how they are uh, assigned so those information so for each and every resource how they are working so that information you'll be able to uh, find it here and the other way to do the analysis also by using the resource usage or by using the task usage. So where in a tabular form you will be able to find out how the resources are being distributed for each and every task and for a particular week or a date. So that information that you'll be able to find out. OK. And uh, so the other th so once uh, everything is being set up and that is uh, done so you'll be able to find out so what is my total um, project cost so i go to the cost table and find what is my project cost total cost that is there and what is my baseline cost and if i have given the tracking and updated the project so you can find out so this is how i have planned that is my baseline cost and uh, to till now i have spent this much and so based on that particular status date that which i have set so this is the variance that i'm getting and from the total cost uh, this much variance will be there so the total cost is this much baseline is this much so the, uh, the difference everything that you'll be able to find out with the variance and how much remaining is there to complete it so that is the cost information and if you need to see the schedule information fully so whether it is a uh, uh, early start late start uh, the total float and free slack. So all these informations that you'll be able to find out. And then um, the variance details for the particular task, whether it is a um, baseline finish or baseline start, what is the start variance, finish variance. So all these informations that you'll be able to get it. OK. OK. Now, so uh, so if you do all these things and so now I need to find out I need I have updated the uh, project and uh, uh, so all this information. Now I need to find out whether the project is running as per my track or not. So I need to find out so go to and chart and find out the tracking Gantt. So you'll be able to find out how these particular uh, how this particular thing is running. So whether the um, uh, baseline, so how the baseline is uh, set and how is my current plan. So all this information that you'll be able to uh, find. OK, so this is how I have planned. That is the baseline information and this is how the current uh, plan is being set out that you can see. OK. So if you do that, all these informations, then go ahead with the uh, report. 
So there are various built-in reports that are available, so which you'll be able to uh, find out and track the system. So the in the dashboards, so you have the burn down. So how the burn down information is being set. The, so the work uh, burn down and the task burn down. So that is being uh, you'll be able to find out, and then you can find out the cost overview. So earlier, if you're using 2010 or 2013, so the graphical reports are, you may not be able to find out. So, but here uh, they have built in that graphical reports and uh, on a user friendly way and in a presentable uh, manner. In the other reports is the resource overview report. If you want to see so how the resource overview reports, so the resource status, work status, all these informations, and how the each and every resource when it is being yeah, when they are starting, when they are finishing, and what is it overall work that they are using, and the cash flow information. If you want to see the cash flow, okay. So here uh, I'm seeing it on a quarter basis. So if you want to change it on a uh, weekly basis, then I can see, or if I want to change it on a month, so how it is distributed on a month wise, so that I'll see the month wise distribution. Okay, so that is, and also I can uh, export the data in visual reports and I can see how the earned value uh, something is being there. And how the graphical information is at that you can see it. Okay. So if you see, so this is my earned value report. So still it is showing in uh, quarters. So if I expand it in uh, weeks, so then it will show it in a weekly. Uh, earned value report. So here you're seeing the actual cost and the planned value. Okay. Okay. So these are the various different reports that you can take. And then, uh, so before we move ahead with the next one, so we'll go with the. Um, so in the resource sheet, so we saw uh, how. I added the resource from the uh, centralized resource pool. So I'll be showing. So uh, in this particular case, you'll be able to match a particular uh, resource. So you set the um, resource as a generic resource, but later stage you want to modify as a named resource. So you want to see who are the business analysts that are there. So I want to select that business analyst. Uh, so who is there available and I need to find out. So I need to. Um, replace this business analyst. So I need to find out who are the business analysts that are there in the overall organization. So I can select that and say match. So it will show which are the different resources that are matching for business analyst and you can find out whether they are available. OK, availability is not showing. So then if you go to uh, scrum master, so I need to replace the scrum master. So if we need to say, so I can select the scrum master, and if I want to add, I can say add. So, but no one is available as of now, so I'll be. So I'll be. I can add here. Okay. So, uh, so sorry. So. So as a scrum master. They are matched. So then, so I select all B and the Scrum Master, and then I can replace. Okay. So uh, if you see, all B is added, but since the Scrum Master has already has some actuals, so the uh, remaining portion is being added to all B. So like this, you'd be able to add, uh, match the particular resource, and you'll be able to add it. OK, so this is how we'll be uh, able to utilize this particular uh, uh, project for schedule, uh, project professional and project or project client for scheduling, resource management, cost uh, estimation, uh, tracking and to uh, generate various different reports 
and to make use of the earned value analysis. OK, uh, so if I do any changes and if I publish it automatically that it will get reflected in my project here. OK, and the same. Uh, so here you see the timeline. So the same timeline also you'll be able to uh, see here. So how the timeline is. OK. Great. OK. Now if you go uh, to. Uh, the project online, so here if you see uh, the resource center, so in the resource center I can uh, go ahead and say so the training I will I need to analyze about a particular resource and how their capacity is so I can select that particular uh, set of resources and I say capacity planning. And you can see the resource utilization, so you can see the resource utilization graph. So this is not for one single project. It will show for all the projects. So wherever you are working. So if you see uh, my name, so it is showing my capacity is 40 hours uh, per week and I'm available for 24 hours for each week, but I'm working on projects hybrid uh, uh, transformation projects and loan management project on this uh, week and for this week this week and if you see the week of September I'm working on all these four uh, projects and my requirement availability has gone below that is thir minus 13.6 but I'm available only 40 hours. So like this uh, same for senior sense so how he's available so he's uh, I think he's working too much so it is uh, showing all negative. So but he's available only 40 hours. And the same for training user too. So those information. So this is uh, not on a project by project basis. So it is on a cumulative basis for all the projects together. It will show for each and every project how you are distributed for the work and how much you are available and how much the capacity is there. OK. And on a graphical way also you'll be able to see so and you can see whether the time scale distribution on a weekly, monthly, quarterly. So those uh, information that you can see and this is on a resource utilization and resource utilization by project if you want to see so on based on a project. So uh, jail hybrid transformation, how these uh, resources are working so that information you'll be able to uh, find out. OK. Now, uh, someone has any question? OK. OK. And uh, you also can see the. Yes, please. OK. Uh, so uh, if you see the capacity and engagement, so in this particular case you can request a particular resource and then for that particular resource you can uh, find out whether that particular resource uh, is there or not for that particular project that you can request and uh, so the rest, uh, so manager can go ahead and approve it. So if you see the resource uh, request. So here you can see so this engagement so that is called as resource engagement so that um, uh, so if for any project you can request a particular resource and uh, submit that particular request. So that particular resource manager will go ahead and find out whether that resource is available or not and then they will approve it. So this for this predictive test one. Uh, this uh, they have requested for training user two, and they are given a description as needed as an SME, and um, so the requester is Solby, and the status is uh, proposed. So once the project manager goes ahead and says approved, then it will say committed. So these are all committed because it is uh, already been assigned and approved by the resource manager, so that those resources can be used in that particular uh, project. 
So that is the uh, training sir too. So if the resource manager selects and say uh, accept, so and he can say uh, any particular comments that you can give or just say approved. And once it's approved, then it becomes changes to committed. So uh, now the the project manager for this particular project predictive test one can assign this uh, training user two to that particular task or anything and they'll be able to use it. Okay. So the resource um, the manager before approving or anything, they can go to this capacity and engagement plan and find out how they are being utilized and how they are available and then they can go ahead and approve it. Okay, so this is on the resource management. So then, um, uh, so we saw the project management part, resource management part, um, and then go with the uh, portfolio management. So in portfolio management, so you um, develop the different drivers. So based on organization, so you have different drivers that will be available. So you create the different drivers. So compliance, so customer satisfaction, ROI, or anything. So the different drivers, and then you uh, do the driver prioritization. So I have um, uh, two uh, uh, prioritizations, uh, two portfolio prioritizations I have created. So if you the portfolio two. So I have the prioritization like this. The customer satisfaction is 60.89, resource is 18.2, ROI is 11.24, and market share is like this. And with this help of information, I can go ahead and do the portfolio analysis. Okay, so in the portfolio analysis, uh, I have set some scenario. So with this scenario, I have selected uh, some set of projects and I have a budget of uh, 13 million. So uh, this is how my uh, efficient frontier is coming. So in this particular case, instead of um, 13, so I have only 10 million as the budget. So in this particular case, how it is going to uh, function. So I make the proposed budget as uh, 10 million and uh, say recalculate then it shows that uh, I'll be able to do only these three projects, whereas uh, this one project has moved out. So based on my prioritization for the projects uh, and how I set up the priority for each and every driver, so you'll be able to find out based on budget or anything. So which project to take, which project not to take. OK. So that is uh, what I have for the overall high level of the enterprise project management system. So now um, let's um, see a little bit on the integrated project management solution. So I'll be showing a little bit what we have done. And um, so further to that, uh, Provinces um, uh, Prashant uh, Sinivasan will be showing the uh, for the details. So integrated project management uh, solution. Um, so it's basically so it it brings together all the parts into a whole so it's it gives as a whole product so if you go to buy a, a car so if you see the basic model medium model and high-end model so like that it can be called as a high-end model where the whole product is available so uh, instead of taking only the out of the box features so we have uh, customized the certain requirements and based on that you'll be able to find out the different uh, set of requirements and it uh, brings uh, various collaboration tools together and you'll be getting a complete solution and it saves a lot of time and money instead of going from one um, uh, tool and then getting the information here or something. So it syncs all the information and more transparency between each and every system that you'll be able to get. And with this, uh, we made use of the standardized template. So you'll be able to get the standardized template and various different project pages that are being commonly used and the workflows for uh, uh, different levels and the uh, scheduling audit. So uh, certain pro certain tools have scheduling audit, but the project online lacks with the scheduling audit. So we include the scheduling audit, some type of analysis, 
and then with the uh, roadmaps, task boards, and the port analysis, uh, which gives a reduced implementation time. So if you are selecting this particular option, um, so most of the organization, they will go for project online implementation, then they will go ahead and do uh, various customizations, custom collaboration, all these information. But in this particular case, we have the built-in system, so that can be utilized uh, as a uh, as an out of the box with readily available system and it gives the reduced implementation time system. So on this uh, part of the uh, demo, we'll be seeing the integration project management system. Um, so we have built on the various different templates. So whenever you are creating a, a new project, so uh, whether I need to uh, create an adaptive project or a safe project. So the template is automatically assigned with that. So I create an adaptive hybrid project. And I give a name. OK, so it will create and uh, once it created, it will give the information uh, like this. So you will get the information as project info, project charter, uh, jail entry sheet. All these informations are automatically created and also you will be able to see the templates. So before we go in deep on the various different pages that are available and built in, so I'll show the various different templates that are available. So I have the adaptive. Um, test two okay so this is the template we have so we have the uh, adaptive hybrid test two so the high level schedule adaptive template and the hybrid template. So if you, someone wants to use a very high level information, that is the sprint at the very sprint level only they want to manage, they can use this particular template and then they can remove these two. But if you are using a full fledged adaptive agile template, ag agile project, then you can make use of this particular template where uh, we have set it based on uh, stages. So stage one and stage two and from stage three, the full uh, sprint review, sprint uh, release plan, uh, the use uh, testing. So all these on an integrated fashion that it will, uh, we, will, we have included it here. Um, if you go on a hybrid setup, so then uh, in the hybrid setup, then the uh, so initially it will be something like a predictive. So initial as well as the uh, closing in between it will be running a um, agile model. OK, so those uh, so if you see the initiation is there, project framework is there, project wrap up and then the uh, selection of the project. Then here starts in the stage two between only the agile planning is getting started as the stage uh, three, the planning and designing the uh, product planning refining the product plot, uh, backlog and then the agile everything is available okay and the important part i missed out during the initial demo is so this uh, one view i didn't show that is the uh, task board okay so you have another feature so you can manage the Agile uh, projects here itself, so you can create a Kanban board sort of thing. So we we'll were start, not started next to each other tasks that are coming in progress, task, tasks done or not completed. So those things that you'll be able to do is if you can easily move from one stage to the next one.
OK, so next one is this is select this. You'll be able to move so that task board and you can create the task sheet also. And the sprints. So what are the diff how many different sprints that you are going to run? So that information that you'll be able to give. So this uh, I missed it in the initial uh, project demo so that I included. So that is the the uh, the template for adaptive hybrid test two. Then for safe uh, we have the um, uh, for the safe template. So the safe template is looking like this. So I'll open this and show. Okay, so safe template. We have we've done it like uh, the release train. So various agile release trains, and below the agile release train, we are running the uh, PI one, the program increment uh, planning one. So how we are doing the program increment preparation, and um, the features how they are ranked, the program board how we are preparing, and then between how the iteration planning is done. So the various different iterations, uh, iterations within the particular thing. So uh, done for PA1, PA2, PA3. So based on uh, the uh, so if you want a little bit customize here and there, you can do it. And the same thing can be copied and uh, utilized as a P, um, PA3, PA4 or something. OK. And. Uh, the next template what we have is uh, for the predictive, so predictive. So predictive is nothing but the waterfall. OK. So the waterfall template, so there also we have uh, created three different set of templates. One is the high level schedule. So if you want to manage only at the very top high level at the stage one, stage two, stage three like that, then you can you use it or if you want to go one step for deep that is uh, at the labor level, non labor level, miscellaneous level. So those uh, second level or if you need to uh, have a detailed schedule, so then you can use the detailed schedule so that uh, template is also available. So based on your experience or anything, if you want to uh, go in deep, then you can uh, keep this template and remove these two. Or if you want to manage at the medium level, you can remove this high level and the detailed schedule and you'll be able to manage using this one. And then if you publish from there, you'll be able to maintain it in a better way. OK. OK. Now, so uh, that's how the template is being used. And the other solution what we have is the uh, uh, the OK, so this is what we created. From new, so this is how it will show and then the project manager or the controller or the scheduler who is going to manage this project online so they can update all the informations and they will be able to manage it better. So. OK, so this is for the predictive, so predictive we have the uh, project info. So the all various uh, project information, so the project managers during the start of the project or anything, so they will update it. So that can be taken in any of the reporting purposes or other. And then the project charter. So that information can be fed. Uh, so the here you are mentioning the key deliverables, high level requirements, schedule duration in months, so it is a proposed budget. And the same schedule you'll be able to see it here. And then the health status. So whether the project is uh, uh, what is the project health, whether it is yellow or red or green, so that you'll be able to select and the schedule health. Uh, so this directly come from uh, comes from the SPA and cost health comes from the uh, CPA. So no need to select anything. So whereas in um, the project uh, health, so that is a manual selection option. So the overall level, what the project manager feels. So on a schedule basis, it is running fine and the cost uh, health basis, so it is little um, spending less. 
whereas on overall level so the project is in yellow or if they want to select it green or something so they can select so that is on the based on the project manager and then they can select the resource health and this resource health come from the uh, the work resource how you are assigned and uh, how it is being used the work variance so that it will show then you can select the risk health also okay and for this so you'll be able to see the workflow information so in which stage my project is so whether it is in phase one or phase two or phase three or phase four phase. so these are the different phases but currently i am in phase two so that you'll be able to see it okay so that is for uh, so this is the for how you see it on a predictive whereas in an agile so the same the project info and the project charter is there and then you have the agile entry sheet Okay, so you have the agile entry sheet. So uh, who is the coach? So the, some different informations are there. Number of sprints, what is the sprint length? Who is the product owner? So those informations that you will be able to enter. And uh, here we have the financial information. So I'll show the financial details. Okay, so if you see the finance, uh, so at the high level, you'll be able to uh, capture what is my original planned cost for 2020, what is approved planned cost for 2020, and what is the variance between these two. So for different years, what is my approved? Then you can find what is the cost. So this uh, comes directly from the project plan. So from the project plan, uh, what you have. So what you have built in using the resource built, uh, integrated project plan and um, planning using resource and cost. So from that it pulls the data and it will show it and you can add the benefits information also. So uh, if you see on of the finance, so the original budget is started from 2020, but the benefit for the particular project you'll be able to starting to get only from 2021. So what is the benefit of the project that you're going to get so that you'll be able to add it. And we included a plugin. So the, here the major integration point that is coming. Uh, so either um, you can use uh, the Fluent Books or UMT. So this is at the high level how the cost uh, is distributed. So the forecast and the actual cost from June to July, July, August. So all this information at the very high level. So resource uh, labor cost, non-labor cost, license cost, hardware. Uh, so for capital and operating, so that breakdown you can show. So this is at the high level and not at the task level. So the task level, we are capturing it uh, here and the overall project information on a financial basis that you're capturing it here. And uh, so the uh, very high level information, uh, if you want to, that is the top down information that you need to uh, give so that you'll be able to give it using this uh, table. OK, so this is for the agile, how the project different project pages are available. And uh, if you see for uh, safe, so safe, the project info, project charter, everything is there. And if you see the um, workflow, so the safe workflow is something different. So the PA1, PA2, PA3, PA4, and then the closure is there. Whereas if you uh, saw in a predictive, you had phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, and then the closure. So here you have the different workflow. So based on uh, while creating the project, how you are um, selecting which type of uh, project. So based on that, the workflow template, everything will be automatically uh, taken into consideration. So here the project info project charter is there and the safe entry sheet is the only thing different and the PA1 PA2 information that is being shown. Now we are in the PA2, so it is showing PA2. So if you are in PA1, so that particular page will show here. Okay, so here you have the safe basic input you're taking and the various input and dates that you're taking for the agile team names, uh, start date of PA1, start date of PA2, PA3, who is the solution manager, who is the solution architect, who is the release train engineer, solution train engineer, epic owner, all these informations that you will be able to feed in here. 
and if you go to this uh, details of the PA2, so where you can find out the basic info of when you started this PA1, PA sorry PA2, and when you finish, when you are going to finish the PA2, and the, the number of sprints that you are planning for this uh, PI, including all the different uh, teams, and the various different functionality you are going to achieve. So that is the number of features planned here is two, number of features planned and. Uh, accepted is one, enablers is how much, stories is how much, all this information and the quality metrics that you will be able to um, derive from this one, from the various inputs that you are given and uh, other uh, uh, metrics also you will be able to capture, that is the total business value, uh, releases for PA2, all these informations. Okay, so that is uh, about the various different pages. So if you're taking the solution, so the template as well as the different pages for the different uh, uh, type of projects, so everything will come as is. And so minor modifications if you want to do during the migration or anything, so that will be added up. Okay. So now if you see, so we have the also we have built in uh, different uh, views. So if you see here, so the, now we are in the safe metrics uh, view. Uh, if you want to see the financials and the finance benefits and so the financial details need to be collected by the portfolio, uh, sub portfolio managers or the program managers. So they will be able to get for the project. So each and every project, the project ID when it is starting finishing, what is approved plan, what is original, uh, original plan, what is the variance, uh, what are the benefits. So all these informations they'll be able to get it. So actual cost, EAC, uh, BAC, all this information. And so we have the overall metrics indicator. So for each project, how it is performing. So the start and finish, what is the benefits achieved? What is the CPA and the customer satisfaction index? Number of enablers, number of features, what is the SPI, what is the TCPI? So all these informations all uh, built in, so no need to customize. So directly you'll be able to get the information and other major indicators. What we created is um, so using the uh, uh, traffic light indicators, you will be able to. Uh, so the portfolio managers, they will be able to get the details directly uh, here. So if you move the cursor near, so you, uh, instead of going for, so in this particular case, if you don't want to if, uh, execute, you want to see the direct information here and he is uh, well versed with it, you can hide this particular uh, column. So uh, if you move it here, what, okay, what is it, this green? So whether it is correctly one or something, so it's 0.98. So it is showing is green. So that information that you will be able to get on the schedule health and here so since there is no information so it is showing in bulb and acwp bcwp so all the major metrics that is being added so these are the various uh, different views that you have created and um, so that's it so the uh, the templates the project pages the um, various uh, views and even for the schedule, you'll be able to see the various uh, views separately that is being uh, created and how better you can use it. OK, so that's what I have. Um, I think we are good in time, so I'll transfer uh, to. So uh, Prashant or Srinivasan, you can take uh, go ahead and take. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Alvi, sir. Uh, good evening, all. So, we had a, a detailed walkthrough of uh, all the features that uh, we have built in the Promise Solution. So, in addition to these, what uh, Alvi, sir, has shown, uh, I would like to quickly show you a couple of uh, additional plugins and features that Promise uh, contains along with few of the uh, business intelligence uh, reports. So I would like to share my screen. And yeah, so let me open uh, Project Professional in order to show you the first uh, uh, plugin. Now, 
you can see uh, on my screen there is a project that is a project schedule that we have prepared in uh, the project professional. So we have built a schedule audit, a schedule audit in the sense based on the DCMA's best practices. Uh, what are the good practices that a project schedule should have when it comes to uh, building a proper schedule? So we have uh, coupled all those best practices into a add-on to Microsoft project. So which we named it as Bird Plus, which you can see is given as a tab in the ribbon in the project professional. Now, this tab has multiple options uh, where the first one is the schedule audit, which runs at diagnostics on the project schedule and gives the status of the project schedule and what are the missing elements. And it will find out based on the best practices from the existing schedule. And also it will give us the rating in terms of score out of 100. How, how much does this project scored in terms of the best practices that we need to follow. So any plan that we have built, any schedule that we have built, the moment we open it, you can see there is uh, a schedule audit button over here. Then click on it and it will open a dialog box which gives us the information on the the score and the other elements that uh, we have checked out. Now, if you go to the last tab, that is score, uh, you can see there are different elements against which the score for the project is calculated. So you can see when you go and expand each of the tabs, uh, these are all the, the metrics against which we have measured the current existing schedule. And it will, it will calculate based on for each of the elements we have uh, rating against which the total score is computed and given as 66. Now, uh, for example, if you see there is uh, 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 there are different elements with, for example, let us say that existence of recurring task. So there is score of zero for it. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll go and quickly uh, insert a recurring task in this. I'll go and insert a recurring task. I'll call it as review meeting. And I'll give the duration as one hour. And on every Friday for one hour, it happens and end after, let's say, 10 occurrences. So when I go and create a recurring task, uh, you can see there is a, a new recurring task that is created inside project management. And each task is scheduled for every Friday for one hour that is created. Now, once I have done this change, uh, if I go and click on schedule audit again, um, then I'll go back to the score and you see earlier it was 66. Now it increased by five more points. So 71 is the score. So where we are lacking, where what are the things that we need to do? For example, task with missing baseline info. So what are all the tasks that are having, not having the baseline information? When I go and click on the task dependencies, it gives us the IDs of the task. You can see a number of tasks with miss, missing baseline information, two, four, five, et cetera. So all the IDs of the tasks uh, are given here. So when we go and check this, and when we have this information available with this, we can go back and then I'll go and set, set it right. I'll go and set the baseline for it and come back and check the audit again, now we can see that score keeps improving, which includes the best practices. Now 71 has become 81. So and when we keep moving forward, we, this is how we will have to check the different elements of uh, the scheduling best practices and keep rectifying them and keep improving the score to build a proper uh, schedule with all the good practices incorporated into it. Okay. So the next part I would like to go into is the risk analyzer, which is built on the very uh, common, well-known technique called PERT, so which is again a three-point estimate. So first I'll do, what I'll do is I'll go and do a 
three-point estimate and create the necessary fields that are required for doing this analysis. So now you can see the optimistic, most likely pessimistic, and mean and the critical path uh, values are getting populated. Now what I'll do is I'll go and uh, auto-populate the optimistic, pessimistic values. So I'll go and say it's 0.7 and pessimistic, I'll go and give it as 0.5. So the duration estimate, whatever we have given here, is considered as one, and 1.5 times will be the pessimistic value, and 0.7 times will be the optimistic value. So when I click on OK, you can see the durations of all the optimistic and pessimistic durations of all the activities getting populated here. So based on this, uh, uh, I can, I can, I'll, I'll just go and say that okay, it's most likely the mean duration, whatever has come, is uh, okay. So I'll go and adjust the duration to the activities that are there. So all the activities, I'll go and adjust. Okay, just give me a moment. Yeah. It says 20 tasks. Okay, let me let me do that for 20 tasks alone. So I'll go and adjust the durations for that. And you can see the mean duration is again populated into the duration column. So the considering the risk that is involved in these activities, I'll go and replace these durations with uh, the mean duration. And now once that is done, I can go and create a buffer. So when I go and click, click on a buffer, uh, it shows uh, two options, based buffer based on the critical path variance or buffer based on the overall duration of the project. So including the non-critical activities also, I can go and paste the buffer. So if the critical path duration is 88.97 days, so overall uh, duration, so half of it, I will go and add, and you can see there is a task that is created with 44 days duration. And it also shows an indicator saying that this task has gone past its deadline by so-and-so, uh, so-and-so date. So it means that the project is supposed to be completed uh, somewhere here and we have gone past it. So when any of these tasks uh, gets delayed, for example, instead of uh, development activity took 10 days and instead of uh, five days, then I'll go and uh, go and correct my buffer so that it will it will go and uh, go and adjust the buffer and bring it back. So this is the second element that we have brought in. So along with this plugin is also part of the promise and during the configuration of promise on your laptops, desktops, we will go and uh, set it up to work on your projects as well. This works with the, the files that are saved offline on your desktop as well as the files uh, or the plans that you published it into project online as well. Now, let me go and quickly open one project from uh, the project online. And quickly uh, show, show you uh, different other elements of promise that are there. So the, there will be an uh, inbuilt assumptions log, an inbuilt uh, uh, risk register, so all these are available for us for our, our for our use, which will work seamlessly with the project professional view itself. Now, for example, if you see here, you can see there is this is a stakeholder register, which speaks about the list of stakeholders along with the power, interest, influence, and the index for that particular stakeholder and the strategy what we need to do, and also any remarks and all can be kept as a track of it. This is a stakeholder register which is part of uh, the promise. When I go and click on the risk view, you can see all the columns that are related to the risk. Risks are, are given to us. These risks can be attached to the activities. So you can define the risk and 
which category of the risk categorization, whether it's scope related, scheduled resources, cost quality, or stakeholder related. The probability and impact, it will calculate the rating and then it prioritizes the risk. So what is the strategy? How do we want to respond to this risk can be uh, given over here. And you can also uh, define the action that we need to do it and we can assign responsibility to that particular risk or for that particular response to be implemented. Who's the person who's going to implement this response? Okay, so set a deadline or due date for that risk which before that deadline or due date that a uh, responsible person should be implementing the response. So similarly, we also have one more module called assumptions log uh, and also uh, air racing. So I'll, I'll just go and uh, show you the assumptions log here. So you can see here this, uh, all the assumptions that we have documented in a particular project can be given here in the form of a description. And then we will go and define the responsibility for the assumption, what type of category is it assumption or a constraint, and what is the source of this assumption from where we make this uh, assumption, what are the consequences of it, and uh, what is the chance that if this assumption goes wrong, what will be uh, what is the probability of this assumption going wrong? And if it goes wrong, what will be the impact? So in order to handle that, what actions do we need to take? So these are all the different uh, other elements that are part and parcel of uh, the promise solution that we have spoken about. So along with this, one more interesting thing, uh, because we have spent a lot of time on the agile part, is what I would like to show you is the uh, integration of promise with Azure boards, which is um, um, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft solution for managing agile projects. So this Azure boards contains uh, multiple modules, like we have Azure boards, pipelines, we have uh, 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 testing, uh, Azure testing, so all these things can be automated. Automated testing can be possible in Azure repos to uh, post a code. Something works like a GitHub. So all these things are part and parcel of it. Now, when you build a proper project schedule, we can go and integrate this with the Azure boards, and the activities here will be published into Azure boards in the form of features, epics, or uh, or uh, or uh, in fact, for the task level as well. So let us quickly see one particular example for this. So I will uh, let us go and uh, as you see on the screen, you can see there is one project which is uh, Clarity PPM. So we'll go and build a team for this project with the existing resources. So I'll go and uh, build a team from the enterprise. And uh, we have added Anil, and also we'll add uh, Stephen to the team. And now click on OK. And now let us go to the team uh, ribbon, which is uh, add-on for the Microsoft Project Professional in order to integrate with Azure boards. So only when you install these plugins, these things will be available to you in the ribbon. Otherwise, the ribbon will be free. Now, when you, we have already connected and integrated this with the approaches Azure Boards tenant. So you can see all the projects that are available in ProHSDA.com tenant, so will be visible there. So this project should be linked to which team project in Azure Boards is the thing that we are doing it now. So we'll pick up Bert Plus as the project for the the current project to publish the current project stats. So let's click on connect. And the moment we click on connect, uh, you can see there'll be a couple of more views that will be created. So you can see there is uh, two views called Team Foundation Gantt and Team Foundation Task Sheet. So let's go into the task sheet. And this is a place where we do the assignments and categorize the activities in terms of uh, whether it is an epic, it's a feature, it's a story, or it's a task. 
So these customizations can be done on the uh, Azure boards front. So the same things will be picked up for us for to use it here. So for this uh, particular uh, determined project scope, I'll name it as a uh, epic just to show the configuration. So work item type we'll have to create it. So uh, yeah, next one we can choose uh, as a feature. And now you can go and see the resource names that are there. So which iteration uh, does it belong to? And also the resource name will have the uh, particular team members whom we have just added. So I'll add Stephen Chirra to it. And uh, one more and as Anil Kumar. And now you can add that to a particular sprint, which iteration does it belong to? So let's go and pick it up as iteration one. And yeah, so once we set these parameters ready, so we are ready to publish this tasks into Azure boards and track it there during our daily scrum uh, meetings, daily standup meetings. So we click on publish, and then uh, you can see there is uh, one particular uh, items that are uh, defined and then they will be published into the system. Now the system is already these things are published into it. So let's go into the Azure boards interface and then uh, refresh the page to see uh, the task. So determine project scope, whatever the epic that we have created. So the symbol, you can see there is the epic symbol here. You can see when you point your cursor on it, it shows as an epic. And determine project scope is the activity and it is assigned to Stephen Chirra. So once we do this integration, we can go to the boards, define these boards for each sprint, and you can drag and drop these activities into uh, multiple items uh, into the different stages as it progresses. The same thing uh, can be maintained as a part of backlogs and uh, in the product backlog as well as sprint backlogs. So this is how the Promise system will integrate with Azure DevOps or in Azure Boards module of Azure DevOps and uh, communicate to and fro about the status of the tasks in terms of Azure, uh, I mean, uh, Agile and safe related terminologies and management theories. So Promise also has uh, integrated uh, data pack which we will also see now. Let's go to the PWA, the project center, and uh, let's see the business uh, intelligence reports, the dashboards. Yeah, so you can see the Power BI part here. Now let us go and open one pack of reports that are available for the Promise solution. Uh, you can see here there are uh, different uh, pages that are available in this particular report pack. So this report pack is configured as a standard pack for Promise. When we go and configure Promise, this pack will be linked to the particular project online tenant. So the data from the, the projects will be picked up in the real time and these dashboards will be updated uh, periodically and it will always show the real, real time data. Now, if you see the project status, uh, you can see uh, the costs that are there on the graphs uh, in the center and uh, in time-phased distribution of cost where, uh, over time, so how the cost is being flown here. The same thing uh, you can see at the bottom, completed milestones, upcoming milestones, and the overall percentage complete of the project. And for that particular project, uh, so schedule variance, so project finish variance is gone by six days, work variance, cost variance, all these things are uh, calculated from, by the, from the data that is picked up from the project online system. So we can change this report and make this report uh, available or visible for, or for any project. So from the top right, you can see there's something called as project name. So from that drop down, we can go and select the list of which project we would like to uh, like to see, and we'll just go and select uh, Clarity PPM, and then you can see uh, the project status for that particular project, Clarity PPM, whatever we are speaking about. So similarly, we have uh, S curve. 
so costing information is not available in this particular project we can uh, once it is done uh, we'll be able to see that now we'll let us go and choose a different project which has some amount of costs that are available and automatically the costs will s curve will be developed over a period of time so milestone wise payment so what are the different milestones if we configure it the payments will be tracked and how much amount will be given also can be given using these graphs. So all these reports are interactive and we can play around with these apply filters, we can change the projects uh, for which project we would like to see and all these things are available there. So similarly, we have a few reports from uh, the resources. We have a resource, uh, the utilization of resources can be tracked. So how many hours the resource is available, how many hours we, we have allocated into the projects and how many hours <clears throat> excuse me, he's available to work for further during uh, the particular month or particular week. So you can see the heat map available in terms of month-wise, how many hours the resource is available to work. Uh, so if you see Stephen Chitra, he's still uh, available for 72 hours because he's already working on uh, different projects during the month. So we can drill down and do the resource analysis when we are doing the assignments for the projects. So I'll skip the other uh, reports and go to the project risks and issues, which uh, you can see on the last page of the report pad. Now, uh, this is a consolidated, uh, the risks that are picked up from all the projects that are available in, the, uh, in, in our particular tenant. So it, it reflects uh, the amount of risks based on the categories, whether it's a technical risk or what kind of risk it is and you can see there is a kind of a bubble chart that is given in the middle based on the probability and impact uh, what is the percentage what is the score of the risk given pictorially in the form of a uh, bubble chart so similarly you can see the issues as well and the list of issues and risks at the bottom in the form of a table so who is the owner what is the priority what is the due date what is the status of the issues and as well as the risks so both can be monitored overall at enterprise level or for a specific project, if we can apply a filter and we can go and apply a filter and also check that. Okay, so these are all part and parcel of uh, the promise solution that we have built. So along with whatever all research has given to us in terms of the governance through workflows, uh, in terms of the indicators in the project center, the resource management, resource allocation, utilization, and uh, phase-wise approvals using the, the workflows, building a proper schedule, and an add-on to it where we speak about uh, bringing the best practices of schedule and an automation around that to go and analyze and audit our schedule and give us the score and uh, integrate it with Azure DevOps to manage your uh, automated testing, your code repositories, and also the agile stand-up uh, interfaces, so that integrations are possible. And finally, but not really the least, we added this report content pack from Power BI also as into the promise suite. So that is it from me. I'll hand it over to Sinus and Sir. So, Sir, over to you. Thank you, Prashant. Uh, thank you all. I think, uh, uh, Senior, sir, uh, just a minute. Yes. Uh, I, I forgot about the project for the web. Let me cover. Give me two minutes. I'll cover that and I'll hand over to you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so I hope you're able to see my screen. So this is uh, what we have for the project for the web. So this is. Uh, the, so this is the uh, new feature that is coming along with the project uh, online. So the so uh, so going forward, so this will be the major um, thing that will be coming as a front end for each and every uh, project online system. So uh, in this, uh, you have the uh, you can create the boards as well as you can create the roadmap. So at the high level, so here I can see the various uh, different uh, favorite features. So I create the portfolio roadmap, 
program board solution roadmap pa roadmap and also i can see the wagers um, uh, projects that i have recently opened or i, I can share it as a favorite so if i can add something as a favorite and you can create a new roadmap or you can create a new blank project so blank project will come like a board so uh, the kanban board the agile uh, medium set of projects that you can manage it here or you can create the roadmap so if i have the uh, portfolio roadmap so i have created a portfolio roadmap so at the high level so the uh, portfolio managers would like to uh, see the main set of roadmap projects so how it is running um, and uh, the period that it is running so they will be able to see the various different uh, set of projects so i have included here the adaptive agile implementation so that is one roadmap project for me value stream is another one and value stream two and three so those are the different uh, roadmaps that i have and also i can create the solution roadmap so solution roadmap so that this takes the information from the uh, value stream so if you see the portfolio roadmap and uh, solution roadmap so both are taking the information from the uh, value stream only so here you can see the enablers and capabilities whereas here you can see the epics okay so the high level information and on the program board so you'll be able to create the grid level information or you can create a, a board so the like, same like uh, kanban so where you'd be able to move each and everything so uh, progress so i can move a particular task i guess i can add it Okay, so like this, I can uh, uh, make it in a board, and here also I can have the high-level uh, timeline information, where I can give the high-level uh, linking, and I can see the particular uh, timeline. Okay, so that's how I create the uh, roadmap and the board. So the roadmap uh, that connects with the <coughs> Uh, so you can take the information directly from project online so this is the project online from here you can take the information or you can take the information from azure devops so so i can say so this is a test and i can say this uh, owner as b and connect to a project so it show whether it is you need to connect to the information take the information from project online or from azure devops and then you can show the roadmap and you can develop the uh, roadmap information or you can create the project board okay so this is the latest feature that is, is coming and uh, this uh, this comes as a um, so currently they are giving it as a free tool so it, this will in the project online system as well as if you have a project um, microsoft teams license so they are including this along with the teams license also okay so that's it i have you can take it over thank you all right uh, thank you so much uh, i guess uh, uh, it's really overwhelming uh, both of you have bombarded uh, people with this uh, uh, so let me not add uh, more to it uh, i'll just uh, add a few more okay closing things how do we take this forward into the card uh, to the customer Okay, I'll just add from that perspective. Uh, so basically, uh, with uh, provinces with uh, 15 plus years of experience, uh, core with the uh, different companies uh, handling different uh, methodologies, frameworks, uh, we thought uh, this would be one a kind of a standardized best practice uh, suite of uh, uh, components. Uh, okay, under Project Online. So thanks to the cloud capability. Uh, so if you just that we have done it uh, from 2007 onwards, EPM implementation, 7, 10, uh, around that period, what you have seen probably may cost around a minimum of 40 to 60 lakhs. Okay, so that would be a big uh, three, four servers to be integrated and uh, different types of licenses. Uh, so it's, it's a huge uh, capital investment. Now you won't believe uh, 
uh, the whole thing what you listen okay maybe it can just start with some 5 6000 okay so that is the uh, kind of uh, uh, flexibility that we have uh, uh, right from portfolio management program management project management so it all can be kind of used uh, on demand even if someone wants to do just i want to see a, a proof of concept okay you can just enable it we have done it for a few customers uh, about 2 3 weeks we can build a poc ask them to show if they like it take it otherwise uh, they can leave it so that is how it is you have seen uh, uh, anytime anywhere from a, a online perspective resource center project center report center okay and uh, licensing as required okay in addition to that uh, uh, yeah this is a set of components you have seen most of it uh, you have seen the client you have seen the project center resource center agile kanban dashboards and reports document center it is there built in and then uh, diagnostic kit for schedule audit and the other things like uh, customized components in line with uh, you can check with uh, pmis body of knowledge or any other methodology uh, in alignment with the risk register assumptions log rasi matrix stakeholder register plus uh, in uh, dcma as well as uh, pmi sp guidelines you see this uh, pert analysis and other contingency calculator etc are incorporated uh, so you can have uh, multiple life cycles built in one so you see that under a strategic layer of uh, portfolio management you have a microsoft planner project for the web project professional and then ado boards and other stuff okay so you can use it for a predictive life cycle and iterative life cycle a uh, different benefits i think uh, you all know it i don't need to mention uh, see it comes with a, a pre built uh, bundle of uh, best practices okay you can cut short uh, uh, the requirements or design or blueprinting okay basically you can just take it as a yeah fast track uh, starter pack okay with i would say almost uh, 80% of what you have seen can be built in as little as 3 uh, to 4 weeks of time and you can go live okay so that is what uh, uh, we try to give it to the customer and then having seen uh, the major challenges uh, which all we said in the beginning adoption okay so that's what often we tell to the client uh, okay look put people first process maybe next and then technology will serve that okay so as they cope up you can seamlessly expand okay measuring the value out of the investment uh so migration so for example many companies no uh, uh basically use uh, project standard which is i think uh, i would say 20 years uh, uh, old uh, an absolute way uh, every project manager having his own projects uh, within his own box desktop not even able to communicate each other uh, so uh, now it's very easy to move into 2019 solution and then we have a phased uh, migration approach with uh, there are third party solutions available depending upon the number of projects that are available as a, a stand alone standard based project or professional based projects uh, so those can be either manually we can migrate it or automatically we can migrate it with other plugin solutions uh, so don't let me not go into details and then uh, give you so implementation uh, it's very difficult to pin it down okay so typically we see this uh, a sales cycle can be closed as little as 1 to uh, maximum of 4 weeks and then uh, signing up the contract in terms of what are the features you want and then how much it cost how it took it it will take what's the timeline so it can be signed up in 2 to 4 weeks and then we can configure the solution as little as i said i told you uh, 3 weeks to uh, 12 weeks okay so depending upon number of projects depending upon number of uh, 
licenses and uh, what kind of level of customizations you want. We always suggest uh, take up a starter pack, uh, migrate uh, the business critical projects, uh, create that assignment, show the value, and then go in a incremental agile mode. Okay, we can go for every uh, monthly release and from that time with the uh, limited features added to it, number of projects added to it, number of uh, users trained, and then go on. So we can do all that kind of support. Uh, as an organization, uh, uh, both uh, CAPPM and the provinces, uh, basically, as I was telling you, a 360 degree service provider. We can be part of uh, uh, process uh, rollout, uh, competency building, digitizing, adoption, support, and if necessary, we can even deploy our project managers and engineers so that they can directly take up your project, demonstrate the value, hand it over, and then come back. Okay, so this is how uh, we have built it. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, this initiative of building a, a bundled uh, solution, okay, we started it about uh, an year back, I would say, and then sat with uh, kind of saw thought leaders uh, and discussed with them uh, what would be the, the best thing for the market and then uh, spent quality effort. And the things like uh, what you have seen uh, as uh, uh, per plus, okay, if you look at it, uh, uh, companies like uh, Boeing, okay, operate uh, with that kind of quality of schedule. We had an opportunity to serve Tata Advanced System. So where uh, we actually uh, did this work uh, in terms of training and other things. So what you are getting, okay, is uh, that kind of uh, rich and uh, complex features built in as a uh, pre-built solution. So with these things, so we have 20 minutes before us. Uh, I just want to open it for a discussion. Anything is okay. Uh, you can ask questions. You can give your genuine feedback, uh, whether it is positive or negative, where the industry is, whether they can take it up this much, how much they can take it up, anything. Okay, we can discuss. It's just an a open forum. And uh, I'm not sure of many of your background. So whatever background you are, okay, you may be a practicing professional or a decision maker or uh, uh, implementer, anything is okay. So we would like to hear from you uh, over the next 10-15 uh, minutes. Okay, uh, so let me open it for discussion. Uh, whoever is asking questions, uh, you can just uh, give a 30-second introduction about you, uh, whom you are, from which company, and then uh, what is your feedback or discussion. Any questions and other things? Yes. You are so silent all through the implement uh, demo, but uh, now it's time for you to speak. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't want to speak, just you can type it in the chat. So any yeah, questions yeah. or feedback. Correct. Yeah. In fact, we we really don't do much of sales pitch. Okay, we just build solution and just take it. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, Sinivasan, sir. This. Is Suresh uh, from uh, Shanta Biotech. Uh, hi, Suresh. Uh, sir, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. My yes, voice sir. is audible. Very much. Perfect. Sir, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just to introduce to uh, team uh, myself, Suresh. I work as an engineering project engineering team project manager uh, for a pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing company in Hyderabad. Hmm. So, uh, I in past I have, I have uh, associated with provinces, uh, and, and our organization is uh, associated in previously for a couple of projects. 
just uh, i was late into the uh, session but uh, overall i am just getting some idea about the current uh, ongoing trend and uh, how it can be implemented in uh, uh, manufacturing sector or the industry uh, where they are new to agile so are they are new or not not all uh, exposed to the agile uh, methodology mm. so uh, just some thought i have so I, i just thought of sharing with you mm. so basically we are uh, maximum we do we just use microsoft projects for our online tracking of project and uh, we do have a centralized uh, 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 it's not a ba tool but uh, it's a centralized uh, uh, project management uh, uh, database where high level project uh, uh, data has been monitored and tracked uh, including uh, resources uh, cost and the uh, timeline Uh, not other part, uh, not uh, other things. So I was wondering how uh, such uh, good things can happen in my industry, like uh, the pharma manufacturing organization. Mm. Yeah. So, so uh, yes, I'm I'm just thinking like we are we are good to handle the project with uh, scope uh, scope time cost and resources. and other things are all, all on only paper resources uh, sorry risk or uh, 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 risk and uh, stakeholder management also are just in the paper not in the real online uh, tracking mm. and mm. just <laughs> general question how my uh, my industry will come this part of industrial standard how long it will take yeah i think the answer is very simple suresh uh, basically you people are doing maybe tenfold 20 fold in terms of the engineering best practices and other scientific advancements okay uh, and you put a lot of effort in terms of uh, tracking through excel and then a lot of macros uh, multiple uh, okay the other dashboard so it all requ- what requires is a small kind of a top down approach to adapt to new ways because uh, we have worked with uh, uh, even uh, companies uh, uh, like at least we have seen it how they are practicing uh, companies like abbot laboratories and all okay so even during this time of covid okay they have uh, applied okay. some of the modern uh, things and uh, they came out with the market within a very very record time Uh, coming up with the new testing devices and uh, other uh, areas so and these things have been tested in uh, aerospace and defense pharmaceutical they are all actually some of the companies uh, who are in the uh, i would say the front runners in adopting these practices okay so all that requires a, a, a small element of uh, top down thinking from the senior management okay because uh, employee level adoption will be very easy because uh, what you are doing is much more complex so what is available is very simple actually so that true, was true. actually my uh, it is changing okay right now we work with uh, novartis we work with uh, redis lab so everybody is open even for uh, agile okay the agile are very sensitive now how we can bring in because agile what is there in the market is highly it centric uh, but uh, agile by principle by philosophy is very very uh, i would say adaptive and fluid okay we need to just put some thought process and then uh, tailor that organization centric or uh, sector centric uh, agile methodology okay mm. Uh, right yeah to so, add on that so so the agile in uh, manufacturing segments if you see the scaled agile and uh, how the scaling is happening in the agile so it is uh, nothing but it's uh, uh, something that is taken from the lean manufacturing uh, setup only mm. so uh, so it is easy for the manufacturing industries to adapt on a scaling uh, point of view because it follows the uh, lean manufacturing as well as the agile if you see the somewhat it remains the same 
Yeah, I think uh, for me, the cycle gets complete from uh, discrete manufacturing industrial uh, engineering standards. Project managers uh, adapted uh, in terms of EVM and other principles in between 60s to 90s. Okay, and then uh, now Agile is, uh, they invented, okay, or derived it from manufacturing. Now it's time they are giving back to construction companies, infrastructure companies, and manufacturing companies. A cycle started with manufacturing, getting back to manufacturing. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, but some mind blocks we have to come across. Uh, that's what. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Vijay, you are from which company? Yes, Suresh, I think, Suresh. Oh, Suresh only. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Sir, Sanofi, Shanta Bhattak. Yes, uh, yes, Suresh. Yeah, I know the yours. Sir. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Hari Kumar? Uh, is it ONGC, Hari? Hello, sir. So, so hello. Sorry, uh, I'm Hari Kumar here. Sorry. Can you uh, hear me? Yes, Hari. Yeah, yeah sorry. I, I was from John Deere. I took a break now. Uh, oh, so, okay. so, John Deere India. So, first time I'm interacting with you, sir. Okay, okay. All right, all right. It's a Pune based company, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, sometime back I met one person in, uh, in the flight. I remember okay. John Deere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so you are also from. Uh, a discrete manufacturing segment, correct? Yeah, actually, I was part of IT division, IT and embedded system division. So I was a project manager, a senior delivery manager. So oh. I took a VRS just one month back. So oh. so just a cooling period for two, three months before deciding my next uh, listing. So that's what I was interested. What are the portfolios you are offering? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. OK, so drop an email and sure. then we can discuss further. Yeah. OK, what yeah. can be done? Okay, Chrysolin, Chryslin, Sam, you are calling from where? Yes, sir, I'm calling from Kanyakumari. Okay. So, I just completed my bachelor's degree. Oh, wonderful. Okay, nice to see youngsters participating in such complex webinars. All the best. Thank you, sir. I understand everything pretty well. Sir. Wonderful. wonderful. Our explanation is very, very... I don't know what to say, but uh, it's very, very good. Okay, in I fact, uh, beginner, uh, I can understand everything pretty well. And very nice. Actually, we have a, a, a three months program for freshers where uh, we teach all these things from concept level, okay, including Microsoft Project, what you have seen, all Power BI, uh, Maratul Primavera. So maybe you can get in touch with uh, Ratna, she'll give you more information, okay. Oh, okay, sir. How should I contact the person? Yeah, you submit the feedback form. We will get in touch yeah, with you. I will be in touch with you. Okay. Oh, okay, ma'am. Thank yeah. you. Ma yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. Hello, sir. Uh, anybody else? Hello. Hi, Reggie. Yes. Hello. Uh, yes, Reggie. How are you, sir? We are doing good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, very good, sir. How was the, uh, the presentation demo? Yeah, I, 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 very good, sir. Uh, just uh, thinking how the uh, advanced project management is useful. Then, okay. how, sir, how it is uh, differing from the P6 module? I think maybe P, P6 has some advancement like this, but I don't um, know. Yeah. It is like uh, it is like uh, uh, if you ask uh, Kolkata people which city you like, they will say Kolkata. Okay. If you go to Mumbai, they will say Mumbai. <laughs> so. It's all same set of features uh, bundled in uh, to different uh, UIs. For yeah. certain specific industries, uh, uh, they prefer uh, uh, Primavera. Uh, but uh, that was actually based on uh, long before understanding. But now if you look at it, both the products can handle workload. Uh, I would say if you want to see a difference, uh, P6 is uh, kind of loosely coupled, okay, okay. different modules. Microsoft okay. project is little tightly coupled. Okay. So each has its own advantage and disadvantages. I think yeah, MS project is user friendly. Then uh -huh. that is 100% sure that I, because I used two things. Uh, but 
quickly in infrastructure industry like oil and gas, most of the MNCs or most of the Indian companies are using uh, P6 only. But okay. what, what is the reason behind that? I don't know. Yeah, but, it is. Uh, if you look at it, mm -hmm. uh, 10 years back, uh, Microsoft project uh, was only having uh, task and resource, nothing more than that. The resource okay. also only people resource. Mm -hmm. But uh, Primavera P6, even 25 years back, having a very rich uh, uh, in terms of various other material resource, equipment resource, etc. Okay. So today, if you look at it, both the products can handle equally any complex uh, 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 use cases. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Uh, uh, guests from outside who have first time uh, witnessed our demo? Uh, you can basically also uh, speak uh, what is your opinion. Even if you think uh, some of the things are uh, uh, can be improved, you can give a feedback. I see Sarat Kumar, Sumit Verma. Uh, Good evening, this is Sumit. Yes, Sumit. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. This is first time I'm interacting this uh, webinar. And, okay. Uh, it is very nice and I'm planning to go for PMI. So okay. PMP, sorry. Uh, okay. So I'm working in a company as a expediter mm. and a procurement expediter uh, since last three years in Hyderabad, but uh, right now at uh, my hometown. Mm. Okay. So the, it is very nice uh, to interact and all the things are very nicely prepared to present uh, just it is the first time i'm uh, going through the flow of the project activities like okay okay it's good because uh, quite often no these uh -huh. uh, procurement specialists no are not uh, uh, well integrated their activities with the main project stream but when the project gets delayed uh, they blame the procurement or supply chain people. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yes. so it is good a uh, few people uh, uh, yeah. align so that you can question the project managers. Okay, yes. you can tell them, okay, how this item uh, mm. influences the critical path, all those things. Yes. Okay, we are also based at Hyderabad only. So you can be in touch with us. And uh, Yeah, yeah, I am, uh, I am, I have contacted Mr. Sandeep. Uh, and, okay. Uh, but uh, the time was not allowing me allow, allowing me to do that uh, PMP training. So oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> sometimes good, good. I will again contact him. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Sharath, I think uh, we are nearing the time. Uh, maybe Ratna, can you share the feedback form? Uh, sir, yes, it's already sir. there in the chat, sir. Okay. Yeah. So in the chat window, you'll find the feedback form. Uh, just start filling it, and then uh, 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 those who are PMP certified, you'll receive uh, two PDUs. All those who complete the feedback form, you will uh, send out an email link uh, for certificate download. You can do that. And as you fill, uh, whoever wants to uh, convey any remarks, closing remarks or feedback, uh, you can also speak out. I have yet to hear from Sharath. Uh, sir, if you don't mind, can yeah, you stop uh, your uh, screen sharing? Uh, I joined very late actually. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah. uh, 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 even though I joined late, the content, what I have seen, it was good. In fact, I am already PMP certified. I am certified in 2013. Okay, okay. So I thought I will just uh, refresh my knowledge and interact with the people. Mm. by taking this opportunity and uh, just to uh, come to understand what exactly the new trends and new technology okay. because uh, recently I had moved from uh, project management to operations to the core operations. Okay, you are working for which company? Sir? I am working for uh, 21st Century Pharma. I am working as a associate vice president. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Is it Hyderabad based or? No, it is Chennai based, but oh. uh, I am working in Roorkee, but just now I reached Hyderabad. An hour back, I reached Hyderabad. I am in Hyderabad. Oh, right. oh wonderful. <laughs> I am basically from Hyderabad. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. We work with a lot of uh, pharma companies. 
Okay. Yeah, so, I, I was hearing to you. I was hearing to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, very nice to know uh, that uh, you are already dealing with them. In fact, uh, we do contract manufacturing for these uh, few companies. What you have mentioned. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was uh, quite interesting that you are already uh, uh, dealing with pharma companies because generally, whenever we interact with uh, project managers, BMI guys, many people will see pharma. Oh, it is a different domain. <laughs> so, but uh, I'm very happy to know from hear from you that you are already working with them and your people are experiencing it and uh, encouraging it. Okay. So happy for it. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Nice interacting with all of you. And uh, yeah. So uh, please complete uh, your feedback form so that uh, uh, we will actually intimate you many such webinars. Uh, in fact, every fortnight we hold a webinar on different topics, very varied topics. So you can basically participate and then uh, uh, be benefited. Okay, Albi, any closing comments? No, it's uh, you covered everything. So it was uh, nice you joined it. So and uh, uh, any particular feedback you give it to us. And thank you all for uh, joining this webinar. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, once you submit,